in another interesting case where the patient got operated elsewhere and what had an envista implant and as all of you know that envista is a very rigid and a hard lens the lens had moved in superiorly and seemingly on the slit lamp it appeared that the superior haptic was within the capsular axis while the inferior haptic was floating onto the uh, capsular bag and there was a big capsular break with some amount of maybe vitreous pushing the oil upwards. So we make the scleral port to make sure that there is a good amount of rigidity maintained during the procedure. The globe rigidity is very, very important here. And since the PC or posterior capsule is already broken, we want some fluid coming from the posterior uh, chamber into the interior chamber to make sure that the lens is pushed upwards and not doesn't go downwards, especially when I try to cut the lens into three slivers. Now I'm trying to nudge the lens out of the capsular excess bag. Luckily for me, the surgery according to the patient was done around seven to eight months ago. Now we nudge the IOL out of the bag. And now I'm rotating the IOL anti-clockwise to get it out of the bag. The endeavor here or the aim is to get both the haptics out and land onto the iris to facilitate the cutting procedure. Now I've nudged both the haptics out of the back superiorly and into the interior chamber or iris. We have to be very, very careful because we might be damaging the endothelium while doing these procedures. It's a very good idea to keep coating the endothelium with a visco, good viscoelastic. Now our lens is totally out of the bag into the interior chamber with both the haptics resting onto the iris. Now we proceed to make the conjunctival flap to make a scleral tunnel. Now we will use a scleral tunnel technique here because there already is an incision. I think the surgery was done superiorly. So I can see already big scar superiorly. So we create an incision in the sclera, leaving a scleral band of approximately 1 to 1.5 millimeter between the limbus and the scleral wound. We use a crescent knife. Now, while doing this, we have to be very sure that the rigidity of the globe is good to get a good plane. So I asked Mounty technician to increase the intraocular pressure by increasing the infusion through the scleral port. Now, once the incision has been made, we again reduce the pressure on the fluid through the port, irrigation port. Now we've coated the endothelium. Now the way this automatic I will cutter scissor is used is that we have to ensure that the sleeve stops short approximately 700 microns behind the joint flange of the cutter. In case if you extend the sleeve, a bit further, the sleeve itself will keep pushing the IOL forward and you will have trouble cutting the lens. There you see, I am trying to ascertain and fix the sleeve to have just the right amount of exposure of the cutting flanges. The direction of the irrigators has to be in the plane so that while putting the sleeve onto the cutter or the sharp edges don't cut or damage the sleeve. So there you see, I am actually adjusting the length of the exposure of the tip and the sleeve tip is just falling short of the cutting edge. The second tip is while inserting the cutter, the cutter has to go flush parallel to the incision and once you are inside the intraocular area, that's the time where the scissor is rotated and made perpendicular, absolutely perpendicular to the iron. Sometimes the sleeve may get stuck while getting inside the wound. So it's not a bad idea to have a wound size of 3.1 millimeter or 3.2 millimeter to avoid desmans detachment. Now you use the micro forceps, which is available along with this cutting forceps. Make sure that the micro forceps grasp the IOL very tightly and keeps re-grasping as the cutting flange or the cutting tip of the IOL cutter moves forward, you will see me grasp the IOL and re-grasp to get a better grip and a better hold so that the movement of the IOL is towards the cutter. So it's a dual movement. Partly the cutter is moving forward into the IOL and the left hand is actually pulling the IOL towards the cutter. This facilitates a very, very controlled. Now you will see the IOL has been cut into 
one by third and two by third pieces. The aim here is to cut the eye oil into three slivers. Now we coat the endothelium again. Now we have to be very, very careful, especially in this case, because the posterior capsule is open. We don't want the sharp pieces of the eye oil to drop down. So the first thing you do is pull out the smaller piece. The scleral port or the infusion port is giving a huge help here by having some effusion of fluid coming from behind and ensuring that the eye oil doesn't gravitate downwards. Now we will redial this eye oil to get a good grip onto the eye oil so that it can facilitate the nudging movements of the forceps. And now the cutter will be reintroduced and the same maneuver of introducing the cutter absolutely parallel to the main wound. And then once inside the eye, before gripping the uh, eye well with the cutter, we get a good grasp with our left hand onto the eye well and then make the cutter perpendicular and start using FACO power. The FACO power settings for this case are 55 to 60. The FACO power just generates a mechanical cutting here. There is no ultrasound used to cut the eye well here. It's only mechanical to and fro and forward movements or linear movements. Now you will notice once we dial the eye well in such a position that we can get a good grip of the haptic and optic junction. We switch on the fluid again in our infusion port. The trick is not to have a lot of fluid coming in. Otherwise, the iris will start prolapsing, but yet not have a hypotony. Otherwise, the IL pieces may drop down. Now, once the anterior chamber is filled with viscoelastic, we again introduce our IL, automatic IL cutter going flush with the wound. Sometimes the sleeve may get stuck up at the wound. So, it's not a bad idea to have a 3 millimeter plus wound here. And there you can see, there is a movement, pulling movement of the eye oil with the left hand and the pushing movement of the cutter forward. And it just cuts such a thick and hard lens like a piece of butter. Now, since two lens pieces are there, we again, you will notice the eye oil becomes again, the eye becomes turgid. I've asked Moti technician to switch on the infusion so that there's fluid coming from behind. But I don't want too much of infusion as I pull the IL out, otherwise the RS will come. So my OT technician is coordinating the inflow and the outflow. You see the eye is slightly hypotonic again. Now I have again switched on the fluid. Now just before I pull the IL piece out, I realize that if I pull it from the side of the haptic, I might damage the endothelium and the IL may get stuck. So I decide to rotate the lens. And I'll rotate it and hold it from the narrower part. This forceps does an amazing job of once gripping the eye oil, it grips it very beautifully. Now, the moment the eye oil is in, out of the eye, we switch off the fluid again. Otherwise, the eye will start collapsing out. Now, we go ahead and do a vitrectomy. Notice that the pupil is going smaller due to the trauma. We do a vitrectomy, make sure there's no vitreous in the eye. Again, push some amount of viscoelastic. We use a midriatic agent now trying to see if I can see the capsular excess edge, which was initially visible superiorly, suddenly disappeared. There was some capsular excess edge available superiorly and temporally to me, but it was not available. So I asked my technician to again increase the infusion pressure. Now I'm trying to pull the iris behind and evaluate the capsular excess edge. I am able to see the edge approximately in two by third of the area. I am not much concerned about capsular excess in the inferior part because in the inferior part, I have a good support of the capsular bag, which is already fibrosed. Now we will be using a uh, lens, Orolab lens here. This lens we will utilize to implant the three-piece lens inside the eye. Mind you, this lens goes through 3.1 millimeter incision. The trick here is to have the fluid just running through the infusion enough so that the IL goes in the space between the iris and the capsular bag. Now you will see my OT technician slowly as the IL is going in, increase the infusion pressure. Because if I increase the infusion pressure before I put in the lens, 
the capsule will come and get stuck to the iris and I will not be able to find the adequate place. Now, since my IOL is resting in, I'll ask my technician, there you see. I've asked my technician to increase the infusion pressure so that I get a good plane. Now, all I need to do is dial the lens inside the sulcus. Once again, once the lens is in, again, we ask the OT technician to lower the infusion pressure. And now, slight amount of viscoelastic is being instilled in the anterior chamber, protecting the endothelium, giving us some space to rotate the IOL. You will notice that there is a slight amount of iris tuck. The haptic of the IOL is getting stuck to the iris in one area, so which prompted us to redial the lens again. Now we will instill some meiotic into the anterior chamber, and there you can see the pupil is started going smaller. There is a slight amount of peaking in that area. We will try and evaluate the reasons for that peaking, but before we do that, we want to suture this wound before we do anything else because right now we want an absolutely watertight globe because if I now want to leave the eye to its normal pressure, I don't want the iris to be protruding out. Once the globe is uh, well tight and tightly closed, it's a watertight wound. We close it with the suture. We proceed to finish uh, some vitrectomy into the anterior chamber in case there is any amount of vitreous in the anterior chamber. And we also want to investigate what are the reasons for that peaking in that area. Is it just an atrophic iris or is there any small vitreous tag in that area? So we do a vitrectomy in the anterior chamber and then I just do a vitrectomy in that particular area where I see a peaking to my guess there is some vitreous there and you will notice the moment I do a good vitrectomy in that area, suddenly there is a snap and the pupil suddenly becomes normal. There you saw it. And now the pupil is absolutely round and normal. We infuse some amount of fluid both from the scleral port and the irrigation in the side port. We actually hydrate the side ports and there you can see that it's a very, very round pupil, clear IOL, watertight wound. And using the beautiful invention by Dr. Neha, we are able to use an IOL cutter, which is an automatic cutter, and take the lens out. Thank you.